What does it mean when the Bible refers to having a reprobate mind? What does it mean to have a reprobate mind? Now, we don't use that word often. I don't believe we do in our our daily vernacular. You know, when you're talking to your friends or family, you don't refer to somebody as a reprobate. Oh, that old reprobate, you know. Um, But once in a while, you'll hear the word. Uh, First of all, that phrase, uh, reprobate, it's also... The word can also be translated depraved or it can be uh, used interchangeably. Uh, That person's depraved, they're a reprobate. But the phrase reprobate mind found in the Bible's Newer Testament, Book of Romans in chapter 1 and verse 28. Now here it is a reference to those men, and of course those women, those men and women, uh, with whom or whom God has rejected as godless and wicked. Now, I know some people, they just can't get it into their head that God, Almighty God, does reject some people. He rejects the godless and the wicked. Now, I don't mean that he rejects those that have no knowledge of him, although you'll see in a moment that there really aren't any people who can say, I have no knowledge of God. But again, there are other places in the Bible where the word is used, but looking in the Roman letter, it refers to those whom God rejects as godless and wicked. The actual Greek word that is translated reprobate, in the King James Version at least, is adokimos. And it means literally unapproved. That is rejected, unapproved or rejected. By implication, it means worthless, either literally worthless or morally worthless. So there's some technicalities for you about the word. Now, if we look at Romans chapter 1, and I'm going to read this from the New Life version of the New Testament, and I'm going to begin in verse 20, not right down to verse 28. But if we look in the scriptures here, Romans chapter 1, and again, verse 20, New Life version, it says this, men, that means mankind, mankind cannot say that they do not know about God. Now I'm gonna put that down right there uh, because that's, that's a profound statement. It's a, it's a statement of truth. Paul would not have written it if it were not so. Mankind cannot say they do not know God. Now some people don't like that, but that's reality. It goes on and says, For from the beginning of the world, man could see what God is like through the things that he has made. So in other words, all of creation, the plants, the animals, the rocks, the dirt, this whole world created speaks of God, according to Paul's writing here in the book of Romans. So from the beginning of the world, mankind could see what God is like by looking at what he has made. You get that? He goes on, Paul, and says, this shows his power, power that lasts forever. It shows that he is God. So then in verse 21, Paul reasons, so, referring again to mankind, they did, in fact, know God, but they did not honor him as God. Now, it's important that you get that. 
All mankind, no excuse, creation alone will show you the glory of God. So, intrinsically, in that spiritual DNA that I often talk about, there's an imprint, and all mankind knows there's a God. There is a God. But people choose to not recognize or honor him as God. Let me go on and continue reading. They were not thankful to him, and they thought only of foolish things. Their foolish minds then became dark, and they said that they were wise. So let me pause there a moment, because Paul is progressing through the evolution or de-evolution of mankind, and he's saying, mankind knew there is a God, but over time, they did not respect him as God, and they chose not to honor him as God. And as a result, they became darkened in their mind. They said they were wise. See, so mankind stops honoring God, stops respecting God, stops recognizing God and the creation, and instead says, we know better now. We are wise now. We don't need God anymore. We only needed God when we were primitive, carrying around clubs and dressing in animal skins and living in caves. But, you know, now we're so sophisticated and got all this great technology. And so uh, we don't need God because we're wise. Oh, we're so smart. We're so smart. We're so wise that just look at the world, how well it's run. Look at everything and how perfect it is now because we're so wise. We don't have any problems because we're so wise. I'm being facetious. They said they were wise, but they showed how foolish man really is. Verse 23, they gave honor then to false gods, gods that looked like people who die and to birds and animals and snakes. This honor belongs to God who can never die. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, I, I've never given honor to a snake or a bird or other animal. And, well, listen, just look around and you'll find a lot of man worship, human worship today. We worship, I don't personally, but people that worship their sports heroes. They worship uh, rock and roll bands or other genres of music. And you say, well, is that worse? Well, they idolize these people. They look up to them as if they were important, and most of them are not. Only God deserves that honor. And only a wise man or woman knows to say so. They gave honor to false gods, and there's many false gods. Idolatry, in some people's mind, means bowing down before a pagan altar or an idol. That's old school. Our society and this world is full of idolatry, full of people worshiping anything above God. That's the definition of idolatry. You can put that one in the bank. This honor belongs to God alone, the God who never dies. Okay, let me continue reading in Romans chapter one. Now I'm in verse 24. So God let them follow the desires of their own wicked, sinful hearts. They then did sinful things among themselves with their bodies. Hmm. And they traded the truth of God for a lie. They worshiped and cared for 
what God made instead of worshiping the God who made it. That's a big problem in our day. You say, well, was it a problem in the old days? I don't know. I wasn't there. Were you? So I'm not worried about the old days. I didn't live there. Oh, but they were the good old days. Well, they were only the good old days because you forgot the bad old days part of it. There's always been bad, even in the good old days. But I'm not there. I'm right here, right now. This is all I have. And I got to make the best of every opportunity right now. So, right here and right now, you have people worshiping what God has made, things in other words, instead of worshiping the God who made it. And Paul then goes on and finishes the thought. He said, he is the one who is to receive honor and thanks for these things forever. Let it be so. Amen. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 28, where I told you we find that term reprobate. In verse 28, this time I'm reading from the New International Version. I'm going to change translations here. In the New International uh, Version, beginning in verse 28, it says, Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile, who's the they? Well, all the people he's been talking about in this letter to the Romans, in this opening portion of his letter. The people who have begun to worship the creature instead of the creator, the people whom God says are the ungodly now. But, but let's read. Furthermore, just as they did not think that it was worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a reprobate, the word here, depraved mind. You see? They did not think it was worth their while to retain the knowledge of God, to continue to respect God, to continue to acknowledge his existence and that he's made all things, and that this mess has not made, been made by him, it's been made by the creation gone wild. It says, they did not choose to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a reprobate mind so that they do what they ought not to do. Now, that's interesting because what we are watching unfold around us all over the world and in our own backyard are people, particularly the people in charge of things, people making decisions that affect our lives. We're watching them because many of them, not all of them, I thank God we have many people in positions of responsibility that do honor God and do respect God, but unfortunately not enough of them and not enough of them in the right places at the moment. And so as a result, they don't retain the knowledge of God. They are operating from this depraved or reprobate mind. And so we're seeing things done that ought not to be done. Let me continue now in the 29th verse. They have become, these people who live this way, have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossip, slanderers. Some are God-haters. I'm still reading. I'm in the 30th verse. Some are God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. Well, it's the truth. They do. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey the ways of their parents. That's assuming some of them had parents who tried to train them up in the way that they should go. Now they're not going that way. They have no understanding, no fidelity, 
no love, no mercy. Again, it's, all of this is describing a person who is a reprobate, a person who has a reprobate or depraved mind. Why? Well, because that was the question, you remember? Question, what does it mean to have a reprobate mind? Well, right there, this portion of Romans 1 from the 28th verse down through the 32nd verse uh, pretty much describes a reprobate. I'm not going to reread it. You go when you get some time and read it over and over again. Look it up in various translations. You'll get a good understanding of a reprobate, a biblically described reprobate. Now, it says in verse 32, because I haven't read it all, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do these things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but they also approve of others who practice them as well. So you have a bunch of reprobates running things in many places, and the ones who get the reprobate's approval, reprobate leaders, reprobate influencers, and those influencers can be entertainers, politicians, religious leaders who have gone astray, co-workers, but these reprobates encourage those around them who behave badly instead of encouraging those who behave correctly. Hmm. Well, now I think we have a better understanding of another statement that Paul made. We haven't read it yet. We're going to back up here in Romans 1 to go to the 18th verse of the letter. And in verse 18 in the letter, you say, why did Paul write a letter and then write it with verse numbers and chapters? Well, he didn't. They were added later. Well, why would you do that? So it's easier to find things. It's hard to find things in a letter that's 30 pages long. But when you can remember, oh, it was in chapter 3, verse 1, it helps you. helps you study. That's why the Bible is structured that way. But this was originally a letter. So, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it says, God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. I'll continue in a second. Well, actually, there, there's an alternate translation. God is showing his anger from heaven against all the wicked people who suppress the truth by showing their wickedness or, as an alternate, who by their wickedness prevent the truth from being known. So you see, these reprobates, these depraved, who are in these positions of influence and authority, are suppressing what is right and true and keeping it from being known because their wickedness, their, their stuff, is what they spread instead of the truth, instead of the truth. And what does the scripture teach about this? It's quite simple. Those who suppress the truth by their own wickedness, it's upon those people that the wrath of God rests and the wrath of God will eventually come toward those people. Romans chapter 1 verse 18. So what actually have we learned here so far from these verses? Well, here's what we've learned. We've learned that people who are classified as having a reprobate or a depraved mind, they have some knowledge of God and perhaps even know of his commandments. However, they live 
recklessly. And they often have little to no desire to please God. So the reprobates are those whom God, in his own words, says, I reject. But in doing so, in rejecting those with the depraved minds, he leaves them to live out their lives on their own terms. Seems odd, but that's just the way it is. God lets them follow after their own desires, follow after their own wicked hearts. But make no mistake about it, a day of reckoning will come. And they are rejected, according to the scriptures. Now, there's another question. It was part two of the first one. What is a reprobate mind? And they wanted to know, can a Christian, can a Christian have a reprobate mind? Can a believer become one of these reprobates as Paul is describing? Well, let me say this to you. Someone who has sincerely genuinely accepted Jesus, the Christ of God, the anointed one of God, Jesus, accepted his mission and his message and embrace Jesus for who he said he was. He said, I've come to seek and save that which is lost. The Father has given some to me and all who hear my voice and know me are my sheep. When that person sincerely embraces Jesus for whom he is, he is Savior, he is Lord, that person cannot have the reprobate mindset. Because if you are truly a believer, then your spirit goes through a process that the Bible describes as a new birth. The new birth. That's why Christians are sometimes labeled born again. Christians. It's just a term taken out of the Bible and in some cases out of context to label people. I don't like labels. A true believer in Jesus Christ will not have the mindset of a reprobate because that old person that they were, that old person and that old reprobate mind is recreated into a new creature or a new creation. Let me read from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This is a reference for you. It says, for if a man belongs to Jesus the Christ, he is a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. I can remember back to when my eyes were opened and I really began to understand the Word of God and what Jesus came here for and what his mission was and what his true message was. And sometimes, sadly, I have to tell you, you don't hear that in some churches. You don't hear that from some preachers. You hear a bunch of religious gobbledygook. But I dove in and mined the nuggets, if you will, and realized that Jesus didn't come to start an institution. He came to find people to seek out and save the lost. 
So if a man belongs to Jesus, he's a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So Christians are basically new people at the moment of the new birth. And here's the rub. We live, or maybe I should say, we should be living differently than the rest whom are in the world, and we should be speaking differently than they do. It doesn't always happen, does it? No, I'm sorry to say. That includes yours truly. But the goal here is to live differently and to speak differently. Our world, if you will, our little world, each and every one of us, our world is now to be centered on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and how we can serve God instead of being centered on ourselves and how we can serve our own lusts and appetites. If we are truly in the faith, and the Bible encourages us to keep checking, am I in the faith? Am I in the faith today? Am, am, am I living the way I'm supposed to today? Am I living in the faith? Okay, am I in the faith? So if we're truly in the faith, we will have and do have the Holy Spirit living within our human spirit. And the Holy Spirit is there to help us to live a God-honoring life. You'll find that in John 14, 26, if you want to look it up. The Holy Spirit dwelling within my spirit is ever attempting to help me to live my life in a way that I can stop at any moment in the day and say, you know what? What I'm doing right now honors God. You know, sometimes I have to be honest, find myself stopping and saying, hmm, I think what I'm doing right now really doesn't honor God. Maybe I'm wasting some time here. Maybe it's time to let this go and move on to something that I know honors God. And you know, if I can do that, I'm sure you can do it too. Maybe you have. The Holy Spirit is within us to help us live God-honoring lives. Now, those who truly have that reprobate mind, they don't have that Holy Spirit living within them. So they can't truly live a God-honoring life. Instead, they are going to live only for themselves because God has allowed them, turned them over, as it says in one translation, to that reprobate, depraved mind, and they go about their business doing all the things that are dishonoring to God and sadly influencing others to do them as well. And in spite of the fact that you may know a lot of people that love the Lord and, and honor God, our society as a whole, our culture as a whole, is spinning out of control. We're reaping the whirlwind because for decades we've been sowing to the wind by dishonoring God, by pushing God further and further out of our collective minds and out of our institutions and out of our daily lives. Now, when I say we, I'm not including myself because I'm, I'm one of the true woked, and a dumb word. I, I woke up a long time ago when I woke up and realized there's a way, a truth, and a life, and no man goes to the Father without him, and I held on to Jesus and what he taught and what he's been showing me. And even though I've messed up a time or two dozen or three or three, I don't know how many, but I'm still at it. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep on following in the footsteps of 
a man whose shoelace I'm not worthy to tie, that man who visited the planet, he was in that form of Jesus, and then he left here. He's not in that earth form anymore, flesh and blood and bone. He's totally different now, but he's coming back. That's a whole other story for another day. I follow him because God opened my eyes and chose me for this. I believe he's got a lot of people out there right now that he's, he's trying to wake you up. He's trying to make you see what's really going on. He's trying to make you see that all these people that are hating on God and hating on truth and hating on righteousness and instead trying to replace it with every kind of depravity and immorality and evil, they're the ones that are wrong, not the people that are holding up the standard of God. And I, I pray and I hope you're one of them. I pray and I hope that God will visit you in your spirit, maybe in your dreams, maybe right there where you are now. Say, wake up, listen to that guy. He's not out there trying to promote himself or his church or his channel or anything else. He doesn't get anything for doing it. He's trying to help you. That's what I'm really doing here, really. And with that, I'm, I'm just kind of out of things to tell you right now, and out of time. Not really out of time. I could sit here and talk to you all day, but you probably wouldn't stay there. So I'm going to leave you alone. I'm glad we were able to do this live. I really enjoy it live. No teleprompter in front of me today. Uh, no script. Just you got me raw with all the, all the faults and flaws and all. So hope you can deal with it. And I do love you. Maybe I've never met you. But you're one of God's creations, so I love you. I pray for you. Pray for you right now that the Holy Spirit will be able to speak to your heart and we'll be able to get into your mind. And if you've been a reprobate, that can change for you at least right now. Because if you were too far gone, you wouldn't even be listening to me. My heavenly Father, I know how much you care. And my Lord Jesus, you said before you left, I'll send another one in my place. But he won't be one in one place, he will live inside of everyone who's mine. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you can move and do a work in the hearts and minds of those who might have stumbled along and found this guy talking about this stuff. I pray that you can help and heal and open eyes get people on the right road. I pray that you can do something for our land. Our land is in such a mess. People are behaving so badly. They don't care. They say they care sometimes, but they don't show it by the way they live, or by how they behave. They just act so poorly toward people and Pray you could do something, Lord. I'm reminding you of that verse in your word that says, if my people, those that are called by my name, will first humble themselves and will pray, you said, I will hear them, hear my people who are humble and who pray. I'll hear them from heaven and I will heal their land. I can only hope. I thank you, God. I love you, Lord. And so I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, look, I thank you for being there. We don't always get to do this live, but I enjoy it when we do. And if something I said struck a chord, turned on a light, made you think, oh, I, not only is that good for me, but I know somebody it might really help? Well, you know, you can share these uh, with others. And 
uh, copy and paste the link and do all that other stuff. And I appreciate when you when you give these a like. And when you're on YouTube, the subscribe and and the uh, the notification those are very helpful too. So anything you can do in that regard, we appreciate and we appreciate you. And the Lord willing, we'll be back in a week. We'll talk again. Till then, may God bless you richly, my family.